Good morning, everyone. It's Breakfast with the Master. It's Tim Morridge. It's the 3rd of February, 2014. Year's almost over. Um, I know some of you have extreme weather. It's uh, a little brisk here in Prescott, but no snow. Don't worry, Dr. Gary. I don't know what it's like in Montana, but it, it's okay here. How you doing, BJ Pat? Got a couple people that are having trouble jumping, drop, jumping in. Hey, Don, what's going on? You got a big drought and too hot to sleep. Wow. Well, we'll send you some snow if we can. Oh, damn. I don't want to hear that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, we don't think about that. It's been a long time since we've seen that here, but... That's terrible. We should look at a cattle chart tomorrow at breakfast with the evening, or eating with the master, or wherever I'm supposed to be at 3 p.m. tomorrow. Hmm. Um. Are your kids back in school, Don? I bet. How hot? So how hot is it? it? Can you do it in Fahrenheit for us? I'm not that bright anymore. Without a calculator. Just give me about. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had... Uh, only in Celsius, uh, 31 in my living room. Why? Wow, midnight? Ugh. That sounds like uh, Phoenix. Sounds like that's I can't I can't why I can't live down there. Yeah, it's way too hot. Well, I'm sure you've thought of other things, so I won't make up make the suggestions. But hope you get some relief, darling. Um, no admin. Um, I have yet to talk to Ed about beta. Uh, I know they're working on things because I get the announcements, you know, as an admin of this has changed and this has changed and whatever but they do have three other big clients so or three clients that are bigger than us so um and year end is always or, or, sorry month end is always a big deal so i'm sure they were doing month end stuff so uh we'll get there because we're right around the corner um and it's not it's not going to change anything for breakfast with the master just the look and feel of the web page um and then it allow us to build some content that we can't currently build right now that Shane and I want to build lessons with tests and grading oh my anyway would you like to do some geometry all right This one intrigued me. This is the 20 minute yen. And I'm not a big fan of yen. Because it, it generally has these bars that are much larger than your the prior trade sitting over here. I didn't even realize that. No, it's not. What the heck? Hang on a second. I'm going to close your screen. I don't want to ruin it for you. There we go. I was going, I don't think I had a yen trade in the last week or so. Uh, there. What? No, nah, I don't want a webcam on me. That'd be scary. Now can you see my screen? <laughs> that was scary. You guys almost had a view of me. That'd be bad. Do you guys have screen or not? And it's a chart, yeah? You got my desktop. What? Wait, do you have just my chart? Or you're looking...
looking at my desk. Oh, that's why. <laughs> there you go. Please see if you can remove it. See, is that take? How about that? Okay, you were looking at a picture of my desk. Well, I bet that was fun. Brown, big piece of brown. Gonna get a new desk though. Something brown. Well, okay, that that would likely be my desk. Yeah, my webcam is Jeannie's painting the bat cave as well as everything else in the house, and she was moving the desk to see. Well, it doesn't matter anyway, and. The webcam came off, and we just decided to leave it over until. Saw so a bowl of Lucky Charms. No, there's no bowl of Lucky Charms. The only food on my desk is actually cashews. I can eat cashews, of all things. It's not too many. It's still taking your chart room, is it? The web, you guys can see the, it's still screwed up, the web, whole web thing? Don says it looks good there. Does it look normal everywhere else? My chart is smaller. Anybody else? Normal. Smaller. Huh. Okay, let me do this. I'm going to make... Uh, I'm going to make Rebecca, if I can, the organizer. And I'll be right. I'll be right back. Let's fix it. Otherwise, it's not gonna. I want it to look correct. Welcome to GoToMeeting. There are 17 other callers on the call. Is that better? Is that better? All right, cool. That's the best I can do. Whatever we got. Okay. So, <clears throat> out of chaos, can we discern a crystalline structure? Like I said, I'm not wild about the yen in general because it pops these bars that are significantly larger. These aren't, this is not that terrible. If you trade it on a regular basis, there are these lo very large, wide bars that, that make no sense compared to the average true range, and so I'm, I'm not that wild about it. This is a 12 period, 12 average true range. Take a look at this bar, although this is not a bad one. 56, 36. Well, that's not bad. It's only 20. So, but it'll sometimes pop three, three or four ATRs, just out of nowhere, and then go. The weird thing is, and then go right back to normal trading without any trend happening. So sometimes it almost seems chaotic to me. So we're looking at yen, and I'm doing my bar, my bar, my bar in advance, trying to see if I can make some sense out of it before I stock a trade. I'm I'm trading some natural gas at the time. It, to be honest with you, it's wet and wild, so to speak. And uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass on showing those. What I'd like to show, um, I was thinking about style here. What I'd like to show is always show these trades in the form that you guys should be trading them, not as a whale, not as a large account size, but you know simple go get the money get the money out build your account size that makes sense so let's see if this fits that criteria 
but before that hat before we can do that it has to start to make some sense so right now you can see we've got a mountain we have no idea whether or not this mountain is going to hold and we don't have a stop underneath the mountain even if it does hold so we've got a high and a low and in a certain sense we've got a, a wide range box 65 pip box which is that not that tradable to me okay, here's a bar that's an interesting bar comes all the way down to retest the low closes on its high see if we get any follow through makes a high doesn't close near its high next bar no follow through so I draw a line and say maybe this is the maximum excursion and if we take out these lows it'll be a line of force as well does that make sense I don't know if it's just a period I'm going through or that I'm being more precise, but I find myself using, um, even on a minor scale, maximum excursion lines more. And you'll see that today. So, testing the lows. Now we've basically charted ourselves into all. Do you typically draw that line of force with that type of bar formation? Uh... You know, Rebecca, I might have drawn this, and it just turned into a mess. So I'll erase it. I probably drew this, to be honest. I'll show you where. I'm not. Remember, I'm not ready to trade. I'm doing historical bar by bar, right, Rebecca? Does that make sense? I'm trying to make sense. I'll tell you when I'm real time. Right there. It's probably where I drew it. And it also fits the, pretty much fits the frequency here as well. So when you're stalking, you're trying to make sense of what's going on in the market. And this is a pretty good representation of the line of force. If you had action on the other side, it would even be a good, a good center line with all the touches but it's a multi pivot line it's down sloping and I think it's fairly safe at this point to say it's a maximum excursion line until it's broken with two closes anybody got questions about that okay take out the lows with nice separation Just when that looked interesting, new low but closing on our high, we pop that bar. Now, look at this bar relative to all the other bars. This is what I'm talking about in the end. And maybe it's just me. Maybe, maybe everything else does the same thing. 10407, 10369. So that's 37 pips. That's three times the ATR. new low new low I mean at this point there's nothing for us to do it's just on its way I wouldn't call it chaotic at this point but I would call it okay the bus is left I never saw an entry that even intrigued me um, I wouldn't have thought to sell here with a stop above here this, to me the stops up here so eh. Okay, because I'm I'm doing this historical anyway. We make a low, close in our upper half. I draw in a multi pivot line, advanced multi pivot line. Okay. No follow through on the upside. Now we got our box going. Even when we're stalking, can you see how the boxes help delineate? change of phases here we are basically in a range now we move to a down line down force uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even know how to draw that one yeah maybe not 
shouldn't say that. Let's see Rebecca. I guess. Let's see what this looks like. Since I'm so fascinated with them right now. We'll leave that on. Because that would be our next one. Almost like a rolling set of maximum excursion lines. But I really think this one is the key. So we're on our way down. This one's been tested. Now we're in a new box. Everybody? Yes? No? Did you guys draw these? Okay. Do you find them useful? Hey, Lewis. Well, don't don't say a course. I'm sure there are some people that draw them and go, uh, it's a box, big deal. But to me, it helps me. The, the difference between maximum excursion and simple frequency. Um, David, I'm, I'm taking it off of a major high. And look at there. Here's our swing pullback. Now we're at the top of the, we're in a range, sorry. And here's the pull out of the range. Really, it, you can draw it here, you can draw it here. It's our, I see the curl back, the pull back. Frequency would be just drawing these, here, here's the frequency line. David, and I trade off of these a lot, especially tick. So here's a frequency. There's frequency. See the difference? I might grab it anywhere. I might grab it from these lines right here. Here's another set. Here's another set of frequency. It's a good question, by the way. I might say if I could grab it. That's not exact, but I'll take it. <clears throat> Doc, the allergies are going, I gotta tell you. You're not missing anything. I might say I like this frequency, even though it's not drawn from an extreme or the breakout of the... Okay, does that answer it, David? Dawn says, I notice you don't seem to be drawing the median lines, lady. Is there a reason for that? Um, why don't you wait about five minutes? Also indicates the speed slope changes in price. Yes, absolutely, Lewis. Um, maximum description on the bottom. This is more of a... It's almost a frequency, this one is. If this is the one you're talking about. Sorry. Or, and then the change in slope would be this. So let's see what we get out of this. No, as you go on, I will show you where I have added it. Oh, okay. In other words, frequency lines tend to be off of a smaller cluster of bars, tops and bottoms, and then extending them out for use elsewhere, whereas lines of force or MPLs tend to be off of wider spread out in time, more major tops and bottoms. Though the big deal is the major tops and bottoms, or they're right at a change in phase. So going from this one, going from last bar before we head out of the range, and I kind of like this to the acceleration point. But it's the same slope as if you just grabbed this pullback. So, Jose, you've traded this. Uh, did you trade the Shen move? Oh, you did? Oh, you observed it. Okay. All right. So, let's see. Do me a favor, guys. As I recall in the past... You said you didn't draw channel lines right. What's the difference between that line of four maximum 
between that line of maximum excursion. Well, why do you think that's a channel line? I just connected a high and a low, but it's the structure that makes it a high and a low. Channel traders parry curve fit a significant amount of highs and lows and then try and chain, trade. For example, they might try and curve, they'll use a tool like the parallel line like this, okay? And they'll try and do something like this, catch all these, and then they'll go, okay, so before we get there, so they'll go, uh, okay, I'm good now because I got, you know, this high, this low, and these highs, so let me buy against the bottom of this channel. You fo follow me, Perry? But this is curve fit. Do you hear me saying that? Have you ever heard me say that? You have? No, you have not. You've never heard me say, take this and make all these tops fit and then put it off of this high and this low because they fit. And then trade here. You've really, Perry, you really think so? You think so? Okay, but I'm asking you now, do you think you heard me say that? Or you, did, you didn't understand my response now? It's important. I want you to understand and I don't want to be misrepresented. Both. Didn't understand your response. Okay. So watch what happens if you curve fit by grabbing all these tops. Let me just grab all these tops because it makes me feel better. Let me grab this top and this bottom because it fits this slope. Now I'm going to buy naked against this line down here. All right, Perry, let's see what that brings me. You ready? Okay, watch. Well, how'd that work for you? Not so good, huh? But this is what channel traders do. Got no interest in it, and it doesn't work. And it's one of the things that we fight here is not only channel traders, because that is definitely a losing proposition. When we do the SEC, NFA, whatever audits, that's one of the losing strategies. Because it's curve fit. Any of the curve fit strategies are just losers. And second of all, we see a lot of people that treat median lines like channels. Um, and I, I think we're going to do a bunch of presentations about that in the, in the near future because they're not channels in any way, shape, or form. They're mathematical projections, and you should use them, use them as such. And we'll get to them here today. Percentage-wise of traders, how many do you think are channel traders? Uh, I don't know, Rebecca. Um, I'd, I'd guess 50 to 100 times more than market than than uh, median line traders. But percentage of the markets? Uh, I don't know. Good question. 40%? I mean, look at MSNBC and stuff. You see a lot of you, you see a lot of channels drawn there. You begin to see some pitchforks drawn there in the last five years, probably because of us. But you know, you see a lot of channels drawn. You know, things come and go in cycles. And you know, I think five or ten years ago, channels were really, really, really hot. And uh, I don't know how hot they are. I don't. I don't, I don't watch any of those shows and. I don't visit other people's forums. I don't have time anymore, so I don't really know. But I, it's a losing proposition. I know that. All right. So let's let's get on with our business. So we form a high, and now we've got our box going again. And this box, the resolution of this box, is going to help us decide whether the downward movement is going to continue, or whether we're going to consolidate.
break the bottom but close inside break still inside still inside kind of okay the bottom is gone so this little weird maximum excursion line worked as well Let's see how I drew this yeah I'll see that, that excursion down as well and further excursion to the bottom all right headstander open make a new low close on our high we just put out a blue line now we're back to we've got our box y'all with me Testing the bottom, testing the bottom, testing the bottom. Boy, looking off a range, isn't it? Okay, so this kind of minor, minor maximum excursion line didn't really do its thing. This really wasn't useful. This never got tested. Now we're swinging back up to the top major maximum excursion line. It's the one I would normally draw. Test it. Let's see if it blows through. No progress. Test it. No progress. Test it. Closes on a low. Look at the volatility slow down as pre copy original max excursion and add it at the bottom of the range. You want it here? Like that? Okay. Just for you, buddy. Um, all right, so now we pull away. So we've got our box, and our major maximum excursion line is held. And I would just extend it out. Again, I'm looking at history. It's coming into Friday. I'm not particularly interested in trading. <clears throat> so uh, this is, you know, a trade for next for the following week. When th that's actually when I'm doing the playback. Maximum excursion line lo is looking good. We've got our box going. Maximum excursion line is looking good, or first close outside, second close outside. E, not so sure now. But we do have our box, right? So now the box, we've got two sets of lows, or two sets of highs, pardon me, sitting here. You could even put one right here where we took off, but I don't think you need to. And we pull back away, and we're back underneath the maximum excursion line. So we'll give it that one transgression. If we get another one, we'll try and decide whether or not it's a max, whether or not it's a, a center line, by whether or not we get a swing above that's a reaction to this swing. Does that make sense? All right. So we've got our box. Testing the bottom again. Um, if it was not a Friday and there was a stop, would you have traded? Um, uh, maybe I misspoke. Miss, miss spoke. Excuse me. The only, the only thing that would really keep me from trading, Ikshan, it's not really that it's a Friday. It's that look how far we've come. with no pullback at all. Um, it's, and the, the, I might still entertain a trade, but boy, I'd really have to like this this market because we've now gone uh, 200 pips. So we did the, uh, we do this in the evening with the master rig, Sean, aren't you there? Oh, okay. Um, maybe we should go through this exercise here. Uh, for the things that you trade, 
you should do some homework about a hundred charts so you should only be trading three to five things anyway so take your time and go back and do I don't know 40 50 major swings and you want to know what's the size of a major swing before you get a pullback and I'd say a pullback of a third or more something like that and just put it on an Excel spreadsheet and average it out um, we did that in corn we did that in soybeans and we did that in a couple stocks and I, I can't remember what else and the reason why is because that, and then you look at the size of your stop versus the size of the average swing okay and you can decide whether or not it makes more sense to better use of your money if you're facing two trades. Let's say you're facing a yen trade and an Aussie trade. Is it better for me to take the in terms of likely profits, assuming all goes well, all being equal, is it better for me to take the yen trade or the Aussie trade? Also, it helps you understand, you know, if you get down to 230 pips or whatever relative to the past 30 swings and you might even demarcate them by downside upside am I likely to get a significant pullback so do I really want to trade right here it's gone down here at this point it's gone down <clears throat> excuse me uh, 120 pips do I want to get short when it's only made a 60 pip pullback well that is a third so that that's a good question for you to ask I, I this is the I'm trying to play for this does that make sense so for me to get short here I'd need to see in my mind's eye that we're now going to but that's enough sideways movement and we're now going to pop this and I don't know that there's enough sideways movement take a look at the chart you guys and see what you think let, let me hear some opinions time versus space Jose says I don't think so okay no flowering not yet so I guess this is part of being patient. I, I'm not I'm not ready to snap at the trade. Um, was there a stop? Yeah, if you want to call that a swing, that might be a stop, but that I'm I don't like that trade this much. You'll be in with the thirty eight percent fib traders. There you go, Shane. That that's kind of the what I'm thinking. And those guys do get some pullbacks, but, you know, like channel traders, the majority of them that trade trade it by the book, so to speak, by the, by the common, common man's use of Fibonacci, not Joe DiNapoli, because, frankly, he, he trades to break the 38.2% Fib traders. He'll take the anti-fib position. He just doesn't talk about it that much. But, yeah, you're basically right. This is the 38.2. So, <clears throat> let's see what we get out of this. And we continue lower. So, at this point, Ikshan, you might say, uh, Tim, I, I'm not sure I... Don't under, I'm not sure I understand why you don't want this trade. I get it. But I take trades that I can see and that make logical sense. And sometimes there's trades that unfold that I just don't see. Or I'm busy doing something else. Or um, I basic just, basically just expect them to... They're too, too far gone for me to jump in. So... Leave a low, no follow through. Leave a high, so now we're boxed in. We have gone another 90 pips. We leave a smaller low, boxed in even tighter. 
and here's Jose's copy of the maximum excursion line. Look at the volatility turn to nothing. Oh, okay. Well, hello. Now we pop a wide range bar, close in the middle. So, I don't know how you'd get out, but I mean, there was money to be made here. Absolutely. Let's see what this leads to. I'm going to open up just a little. For anybody that's interested, that's where, we're, that's where we're at. Are we good? Have you oriented, oriented yourself? Okay. Now I'm going to open up a little bit more. Sunday night. That was a Sunday night gap, by the way. I should I should do that just for good order's sake. Okay, the importance of a gap is would you consider an Andrews count around here? I don't do many pivot counts, David. Um they're in my head, but you know, if they work for you, go ahead. It's not Andrews, by the way, that's Dr. Anderson that invented pivot counts and Andrews would refer to them as the loose count or Anderson's count is what he would say um, you can you can do pivot counts if you want your pivot count is likely to be different than mine I would go one, two, three, because this is a maximum excursion. Uh, probably four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe, or the simple count might be one, two, or sorry, zero, one, two. We're looking for a three on the simple count. That, the simplest count. On a tight count, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or P7. Does that help you, David? The most important thing would be four. Zero, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to say, you know, the maximum excursion line. If we break the maximum excursion line, I, I'll give it this in this volatile currency. If we break and hold over the maximum excursion line for any length of time, it doesn't mean the trends change. It means this downtrend is over. Now we have to determine what the new trend is. Okay where people get into trouble I to me I know people use one to th one and threes and twos and fours the most important part of the Anderson simple count is that it helps people orient themselves in space but I think market structure can do that and second of all the most important line is P0 P4 but then people use that as a trend barrier and say oh now the chain now there's a change in trend which is not at all what Anderson said in fact he specifically said if it breaks P0 P4 this trend is over now we have to establish if there's a new trend the new trend may be down again we may pause and then go down but you have to this and we may just go sideways so don't get too married and don't try and use I know people in the past have tried to use them as uh, trade indicators and my advice to you David is good luck with that it's not a winning proposition even though it's a tool from Dr. Andrews course there are some other tools that I've talked about and uh, and he w and he admitted we're not winning propositions this is this is just a signpost so do I count my head sometimes 
but I'm more likely to just use market structure. I think you'll get further using simple boxes. Anybody else used to count or still counts, but they also use boxes and find the boxes just as sim just as easy? It's more important to me that it breaks than breaking boxes to the downside. Now it starts to break boxes to the upside. At that point, my eyes just shift gears. Boxes are less objective. Yeah, I kind of like that, Gary. Also, we're visual. When you draw the box and you see it break through the box, you go, oh, look at that. Loose count, but the boxes are better. Yeah. So, you know, David, I've been doing this for so long, the, the count is probably in my head, but it's one of those things that I'd have to bring out. And I can count for you, but I only care if it's a failed P5, if we don't make a P5. Failures are the, you know, spawn the biggest moves. But as long as, and you can see, it's easy to see early on that we've already got five. At that point, I don't really care. All right, so come down, break a box, close in the lower third, uh, and go backwards. That's wrong. Okay, and immediately, no follow through. And what's important about gaps? They, are, they do have a pivot. What else? What happens afterwards? That's the key. How does a, how does a gap resolve itself? Or how is a gap resolved? Is your follow-through to the downside? Yeah, what happens afterwards? Is your follow-through to the downside? I don't care if they fill the gap or not. That, that doesn't matter. If they just come up and fill this gap, it's no big deal to me. If they just come up and test the top of this box or this maximum excursion line and then turn lower, I don't really care. That's fine. What I care about is if this gap comes down and then they start to take out highs, then this is a gap failure. Does that make sense? Okay. So we've left our gap, and I marked it. It's a gap. And I keep going backwards. Sorry. Uh, do I have the right glass? Oh, that's why. Hang on. Let me put my right glasses on. So sorry. Uh, it's amazing the difference in reading glasses and glasses that are made for, you know, like two feet away. Sheesh. Okay. That's better. I can see the keyboard now. Okay, here we go. Inside bar, no follow through to the out to the downside. So we'll mark it with blue. Inside bar, not much going on. Now this is all still history. Rebecca, Don. But we're getting closer to real time. And that shouldn't have popped in yet, but that's okay, we'll ignore it. Wonder why that popped in already. Oh, wait a second. Huh, shouldn't have popped in. Well, okay. Is what it is. Now we're coming up to the maximum excursion line. So, you know, I mean, if you're really anal, you can draw a sliding parallel of this and add it right here and say, okay, I'll tolerate that and no more. It's fine. Same principle as a median line. Testing it. No, we're at the top of the box, and the top of the box is holding. And again, the question is, out of chaos, can we discern a crystalline structure? I would consider this a nice move down, but I, you know, maybe I could have caught it, but I haven't discerned a crystalline structure yet. So let's see if I can discern one. How about that? Again, I like to trade after I've found bits of logic, right? So now we've popped our first swing high on the way down. 
And I, at this point, I think it's clear to say that it's broken the line of maximum excursion. Would everybody agree with that? Okay. What does it mean? I don't know yet. All I know is, at this point, the downtrend is not in force. I don't know that there's an uptrend. Gap failure is important. Yeah, I think the gap failure is more important than the fact that we crossed this line, which really acts as the P0, P4 line. Um, it, it probably means we're going to see... It could. Does this look like a wash to you? Look, I didn't even think about that. Does that look like a wash to you? At the moment, it does. Okay. Please, Tim, define the gap. Yeah, Jose, this is Fri This is the close on Friday. Yeah? Here's the open. See the open right there? So the gap is this distance right here. Just that simple. Very small but not obvious. Yeah, it's not obvious. Sometimes they're very obvious. Um, but in this case, the question is, not only did a gap, but then it made a large excursion bar lower and took out the prior lows. So that is that intent, or is that just, you know, first bar jitters, right? What I mean, this is basically... Australia and New Zealand dealing with orders. So people were obviously net sellers. They left net selling orders with them. Or, or a whale called in and said, you know what? I need to sell a billion dollars or whatever. And this is how they dealt with it. They marked it down. So that when anybody called them in, called them and asked for a price, of course, they'd make them this sort of price. right? Instead of continue a quote up here because they're already long they know if they want to get longer they want to get longer at lower prices okay next bar so the selling pressure has eased seller press selling pressure has eased I've been through this okay as we break above here and close above the second two bars above the Two closes above the second high. I'm willing to mark this low as, well, that's not it. I don't know what that is either. In a minute, I'll draw it, but. Howard. Okay. Too many things pixelated at one on top of the other. I'm willing to mark that as MLA. Don't know what it means? Look for the back test, backside test on the maximum excursion. Now or later, Don. Okay. This is just a side note, and I'm, a, I'm not accusing anybody of anything because I don't actually remember what it does. But one thing I would prefer that you guys not do, and I did have somebody doing it, I would prefer that you don't have Ensign open on one screen and this open on another. Okay, and I'm, I'm not suggesting you're doing that, Don. But I want you to view it. I, I, this isn't what I meant, Don. And I'm not, again, I'm not accusing you of that. I want you to view this just as I view it. It's bar by bar, okay? So I want it to unfold in front of you just like it's unfolding in front of me, okay? That's why I ask you to do it this way. Follow me? Um, I'll zoom out for a second, Petra, but only just for a second. Because in a moment, we're going to have to be zoomed in, or you're going to miss. Oh, you mean, or do you mean like this? 
Is that what you mean, Petra? And you can just say it, say it publicly. It's okay. Yeah, I was, that's what I was just about to go there. Okay. We're going to need to be this close. This is about where I'd be if I was trading. And we're playing with Howard for a setting. Um, uh, I think it's in here. Could be wrong. For a setting that says number of bars. But whatever. Anyway, closes above the second box top. I'll mark this as a multi-pivot or, or my first alternate pivot. I don't know what it means. And I'll also mark this out as a significant low at the moment. I don't know what it means. I'm literally trying to discern a crystalline structure. Do we all know what crystalline structure means? Okay, well, I'm, I'm glad I asked that. Um, if you have you ever seen a picture of they take an electron microscope and look at a crystal of quartz, yeah, like just like a rock, Gary, or uh, sugar, or even better, salt. Nobody? Now I get to Timmy's comment. Think of it um, there. Okay, let's let's go to the easiest thing. Um, I don't think I'm going to try and draw it. Can you can you imagine a three-dimensional box? It's the constituents of a snowflake, so let's leave that out. A three, can you just imagine a three-dimensional box, Paul? Okay. Crystalline structures are three-dimensional boxes stock, stacked next to each other over and over and over. When they're perfect, their angles work together perfectly. Okay? Now, the market is very seldom perfect, so... We can only strive for perfection, but when geometry works very well, we get very close to perfect crystalline structure, which are angles lining up with angles, boxes lining up with boxes. Does that make any sense to anybody, or do I need to go find a picture of crystalline structures? I mean, the simple way to say it is, Things line up. You can draw them in advance and they line up. They make sense. Okay? I'm, I'm talking about geometric things. I'm not talking about curve fitting like a channel guy would. I'm talking about throwing things out in advance. Over and over and over. And over and over and over. They law forward testing. It's not even testing, Shane. This is actually the structure of matter in physics. We, I mean, we all that. Dr. Gary's here. He's also a physics guy. Does this make sense to you, Gary? Yes. Orderliness, therefore, maybe an edge. Yeah. So we're going to try and find the orderliness, and then we're going to use that after we after we're confident of the orderliness, and we've got something sitting there, and say, okay, this is followed. This is followed. This is followed. I, this is followed. Okay, you know what? I got another one. I'm and I've got to stop. I'm going to use this one. Does that make sense? So first we have to find the orderliness. And so far we don't have it. Generating diamonds early in the formation. Yep. There you go. Some like gear cogs falling into each other. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that. Uh, let me go all the way back and answer Timmy's comment. One second. Uh, patience. 
Uh, Tim, a drawing technique we used to use was to connect the bottoms of those lows coming down with multi-line pivots. The purpose was to show the deceleration of the slope down when looking at a down market to raise our awareness of a pending change in behavior. Is that one-on-one -on -one thing we didn't do anymore or just assumed we should be doing it ourselves? You can do it, um, but by doing the boxes, Timmy, you're doing the same thing, and I think it's even better because not only do you have, you can see that you've got a lower box and a lower box, but you can see the breakout of the box. It's almost like pivot counts. I think this is better. So, you know, this is, I, I've adapted this change. Doesn't mean you can't do that. If that helps you, that's fine. I don't do that anymore because, I mean, we started to do that at the beginning. If you remember, when we were drawing, what about this off the bottom? What about this off the bottom? What about this off the bottom? Um, I find the boxes, so I asked the question, um, really capture my eyes much better. And when we do break out of a couple, I go, okay, something's going on here. All right, so Jose's copy of this maximum surge line to the bottom. Interesting. Catch us here, catch us here. Interesting that you saw that earlier, Jose. And again, I hope you're not following on Ensign. If you are, please turn it off. I want you to follow bar by bar and understand each bar. Okay? It's not a, oh, I'm going to catch the teacher on something. It's, I want, just like when I do mentoring with people, I don't want to see their charts until we mentor. Because I want to experience it bar by bar, just like they did. So I want you to understand and experience what I'm watching bar by bar the same way I'm experiencing it. Okay? So now it's Monday and I'm up. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm looking at a lot of things. And I'm look, you know, this is just one of the things that I start to mark up. You know, it's Monday morning. Don't got anything going yet. Let me start to mark stuff up. Doesn't mean I'm going to trade this today, but. So we come up, we leave a high and close on the low. I'm going to mark that. See it? And I'll throw out another box top, so to speak, that sounds like Rocky and Bowinkle. Significant because of the close, absolutely. Well, also, we made a new high and closed, and we zoomed this prior high and this prior high, right? And we'll see what it leads to. Do we get any move to the downside or not? Okay. Lower excur ex uh, excursion, but we close on the high. So now you scratch your head and say, eh, maybe that was just a dip down to this clog, so to speak. Next bar, no meaningless. And there you go. Mm, stuff showing up way too early. Oh well, nothing I can do about it. Um, now we pop all of this. You can see, actually, you can let me put in a multi-pivot line. Um, I probably want blue. You can see. Let's grab. Uh, let's grab these double bottoms. That we've got this multi pivot line. And it's a very, very tight range. We spring out of it. Now we zoom back into it. Try, can't get out of it. And then zoom below it. And close on our low. Now the significance is what's going to happen here. But this makes me mark this. Uh, see, is it going to be like that all day? Well, maybe maybe I'll get a little little lucky. Too many things one on top of another. Okay, that makes me think that might this might be significant. What I'm looking for is 
crystalline structure, structure within structure. Okay? And we've talked about this a couple times, but um, in, today we're really going to dissect that. Structure within structure. Okay? So, do we get any follow through? Nope. And when we don't get follow through, I got another idea, which is maybe this is a significant low. I don't know. Maybe. We're well above the, pro the maximum excursion line, and now we're going to pull back to it. If we don't, this will be a significant low. Let me say it again. If we don't. It's an if. Does anybody see that? If we break right now, if we break back down into here, we got a mess is what we got. And at this point, I'm going to, I'm me, I'm going to flip to another currency. I need to see some orderliness. Then I'm going to need some see, to see it break up and see some people get hurt probably. Something. But first I need to see some orderliness. It needs to make some sense. All right. So we close on our high. More room to the upside. Make a new high. We close on our low. Again, are we going to take out what I've marked as MLA? Are we going to continue higher? Close on our high. Close on our high. Kind of a nothing bar. Close on our high. Highs close this swing up. Close on our, well, relatively close to our high and make a new high. Close on our high and make a new high. So this is a new high close for this entire pullback. Everybody see that? So now we've got a higher low and a higher close of this entire structure. Now we make a high close on our low and I mark it out here. I got a lot of things going on here. Close on our lower half. So no follow through. That's why I mark it. Same close. Inside bar. All right. When we take out these bottoms right here, I suppose I'll mark it for you. Probably a smart idea. Looks like about four. No. Oh. Okay. When we take out these bot, these bottoms, I'm gonna mark. MLB, ML, two all the way down. Like, am I completely out of my mind? Let me think about this for a second. Two, three. That makes this one. Okay, this should be ML three. Pardon me. Don't mind the man behind the curtain. And two should be, okay, so this is one, this bar right here. And when we break above here, this should be ML2. Problem with working inside smaller and smaller swings. Okay. Now I've got a meeting. My first. Okay. I'm just going to do it myself. My first median line. Let's see how that works for me. Before I even draw it, because anybody can anybody see what I'm trying to do? No. 
thank you for being can candid, Don. Um, have you ever seen the picture of the nautical shell? I'm not trying to go into the golden um, mean and all those things, but um, I'm trying to I'm trying to make a geometric crystalline structure, which means I'm working with smaller and smaller pivots. So, you, so Don, you wanted median lines. You're going to see a bunch nested within each other. I'm looking for swings inside of swings. That's right. Okay. Spirals within spirals. Exactly right. Okay. Which is a Greek concept, not a Fibonacci concept. It's not an Italian or an Indian concept. It's a Greek concept which came several thousand years before that. Okay. So I've got my first median line. Let's see what that looks like. This will make Don happy. Anytime there's a median line on the screen, even though it's hot, she's happy. There you go, Don. Median line. Told you. Feel better? Can I have a median line from the left to median line A? No. <laughs> it's going to be crowded in a minute. Let some more unfold and then ask and then you can ask okay when I when I unfold a few more then you can say what about X okay I need to unfold a couple more then you're free to ask because I, I, I can only juggle so much in this mess and this is a mess I mean, you can see I can't even draw the damn things I mean I can't grab them because there's so much in here just wait wait till they unfold all right so now and I'm willing to mark this I guess I should have just grabbed them. I've got A. That makes this an important B. Okay. Any questions? Other than what the heck are you doing? Which is a valid question. I actually see something in here. Sometimes you can range extension. Uh, I'm going to try and make a case for range extension, Shane, mathematically. I see something in the chaos or the... I'm not, I could go for double the range, but I'm not even going there, Don. I'm, I'm going to make it with, with mathematics in the sense that I'm going to use alternate pivots for range extension, okay? I see something that leads me to think that that's likely. Let me see. Are you trying to project a possible C with the red median line? Uh, not necessarily. That's a good question. Um, Bob, that's a great question. What I'm trying to do is lay out some median lines and then see. I shouldn't use that word. Well, that's the best word. And then see how this structure unfolds. I'm not looking for C. I'm looking for structure in this one, okay? And I know I did a presentation looking for C. That's right. But I'm looking for structure. I want to know, is this is this going to unfold as nice, beautiful, crystalline structure in front of me? Because I, th I think I can see the structure within the structure, but it's got to play out. But I can't make your eyes see what my eyes see. Only, you know what I'm saying? Only you can see what you can see. So let's see if it... Uh, at some point, somebody else goes, I see it. All right, so we've got one median line. You know, and that could be an utter failure. Um, inside bar, higher close, testing the upper parallel line. Now, you know, maybe this is a trade for some of you. Maybe the pullback here, 77, 92, it's only, it's only 15 pips. Maybe you put a 25, 25 pip stop out. Maybe this is a trade for some of you. If you believe that there's downside room, I don't see the case for it yet. But that's certainly a valid setup. Okay? And we've got a nice pullback. If you think it's headed lower, that's a valid setup. I, I'm I'm still 
looking for logic here. So wide range bar lower. So the test of this down sloping red median line, the upper parallels worked pretty good, right? Would you say that? Are you seeing? Hmm. Okay, Gary, you take care. Have a, have a safe trip. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Are you seeing higher high and higher lows? Um, I want to see the lows work, Kareem. I want. I do see the higher highs. I don't know about the quality. You heard me say this last week, I think. The quality of the bottoms have not been tested yet. I don't know. It depends on whether or not this holds. And then what happens, okay? So it's a... I know that we've we've made highs, tested them, came back and retested them, took them out. So I know the quality of the highs. Now I want to know the quality of the lows. Do you follow me? So. Working our way a bit lower nothing too exciting we're testing our prior low which is indicated by MLA still testing it okay we make a new low but look at the close see it and it's a nice wide fat range bar it is a lower low But it also tested the median line, the red median line. Place ran out of energy at the median line. Right, Don. It tested it, and that's a spectacular bounce off of that median line, isn't it? So that makes me a little more confident that there's some upside range extension coming. And this median line certainly has some frequency. Well, oh, backwards again. Oh, must be back. Found some buyers. Yeah, certainly there seems to be some buyers in this area. Clumping uh, somewhere in here. I think I quit marking maybe. We'll see. If not, I'll walk. I may walk back in a second. Yep. Okay. With that close, and I don't know where I marked that, but with this close, I'm going to have to make it up. I'm willing to call this ML. I, I could be wrong about this, but we'll see. MLC. And also... ML little c in pink. Now, why would I do it in pink? Yeah, well, hang on. I'll, I'll, I'll do it, Jose. I know how to do this. I really do know how to do this. It's okay. Relax. <clears throat> now, I've got a maximum excursion line when we popped higher. See it? See this small maximum excursion line? If this low is significant, this maximum excursion line should be significant. Similarly, if this low is significant, this maximum excursion line should be significant. Yes? Okay, so now let me draw in a median line or two here. Let's draw this one in. And you'll notice this is actually a median line. This is a modified shift from here. Let's see if I can grab this. Yes, I can. Okay. 
Watch now. This is an upsloping median line. Everybody see it? It's not a bad median line, right? What about this as a modified shift? Matches my maximum excursion on the downside. See that? <coughs> Does everybody see that? I'd rather use it that way. Because that mathematically tells me the maximum excursion without me drawing it. It also mathematically tells me the upside without me drawing it all on mathematics. This is crystalline structure beginning to form. Can you see how this formed right at the center line? Kareem? It's structure inside a structure. And we're not done yet though. It's just gets just starting to get cool. Alright, Don, you want a median lines? Okay, then why not draw this one? I couldn't leave this one on because, of course, there, there'd be so much on here. And I'm going to cheat. I'm actually going to just put it. No, I'm not. Actually, it'd be easier for me to grab it. Let me do it that way. Um, I'll take off the center line. Oh, no, I'll leave it tiny. And I'll make it gold. We'll have a gold median line for a change. Can't remember the last time we had a gold median line. All right, so now we've got, and we've got a nice upsloper. We've got a significant tested downsloper. Me likey. Nice touch on center line and even out through BC. Okay, so the queen of median lines, that's what I'm calling you these days, Don, has given her approval, so I'm, now I'm a happy guy. I can die happy. You wish it were cool, don't you? <laughs> what if you change your gold median line from Andrews to modified shift? Well, I'll do it for you. Um, I'll, well, let me... Let me, I should say, I'll try and do it for you. There's so much drawn here. Oh, I think I can grab it right there. Yeah, okay. To a modified shift. I don't know. Why, though? Because watch this. If I leave it as a, if I leave it as a modified shift, it's already been busted up here. If I, <clears throat> I mean, I can do it because, of course, then it mathematically gives me, maybe this is what I intended to do, it mathematically gives me my maximum excursion line as well, right? It does, Kareem. So, good question. Let's leave it that way for the time being and see... But then the frequency is great on that as well. Look at it. I mean, are you starting to see the crystal in nature? I can even, I can go to the Andrews or I can go to the modified shift. Any way you look at it, I've got great structure going, right? Good frequency, great structure. Is it, is, do you starting to understand structure within structure and frequency? It looks better on modified shift uh, due to a frequency lining up plus touches still look good. So, so Dawn blesses modified shift. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. I'm going to do this, Don, to remind myself down here. There we go. Okay, and we did draw in our, uh, and actually they're both modified shift. So isn't that interesting?
So the modified shifts are reading, winning the race at the moment. All right. So at this point, I'm starting to like this. This is where I'm starting to get excited. Tim says, I realize there's no absolute law as to why to choose certain ABC pivots, but not using the highest high as B and catching all of that leg as a leg confuses me. Uh, well, are you saying the gold line, Timmy, or the red line? <clears throat> and actually, I think I misdrew anyway. I think I marked it, and I think I actually drew up there. So, for a second at least, although I really like the structure. Oh, well, the hell with you. <laughs> I'm just having so many trouble, so much trouble with all these things, laying layers over layers. This is actually what I have marked, so let me just... I couldn't leave the gold in because I couldn't get to it. Now you'll see why. Uh, there's a color I could do with that. But we I like that I like that gold modified shift. Now that now that we've had it in there. <clears throat> so let's put just for me and Dawn let's confuse things even further and let's make this one it's not a bad color Wait, that doesn't do it for me. What did I screw up? Yeah, now I don't need it. All right, let's watch. All right, <clears throat> which can which confluences of the snowflake become the most important for making money? Um, it's not the confluences, David. It's Shane said. Why isn't the red ML3 the B for the gold lines? It is the B. No, it's the C. A, B. A, B, C. Is the red. And why isn't that the B for the gold line? That is now the B for the gold line. Okay, we're, we're going to have to go with what I draw and if you want to. Okay, yeah, and then if you've. Right. It, there, I've got so many things drawn, guys, that because I don't want I don't want to leave the forks on there, and I the gold one especially, I actually couldn't I couldn't click on it. Can you see how it's overlaid? The BC line is overlaid on something else. I couldn't find a way to click on it. So the only way to do this was for me to draw in the gold. So I misdrew. It's not a big deal. Throw a little red sauce in there, and you have spaghetti. Yeah. But <clears throat> take a look. This forces two major pivots. <coughs> the maximum excursion line works off the two major pivots. If you just roll it to the top, of course, you get the maximum excursion line. The modified shift off of this low, are you, are you listening? I'm not talking about energy points, just listen. The modified shift from this low, when you shift it, 50% is right at the red downsloping median line. See that? We have structure within structure within structure. Now, 
I said I wasn't sure the qual plus a horizontal line which makes the MLA look like a wash. Mm, okay. I'll take that. I'll even extend it out for you. Hope this is the line you're talking about. <coughs> Excuse me. Just as this looks like a wash. Well, I need somebody smarter than me to, to draw. And you know what? Let's let's ask that question. And I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm starting to wheeze. So my apologies when you listen to this. There is, uh, we, it is spring where I'm at, believe it or not. I know you guys in the Midwest think I'm crazy, but it's spring here. And the juniper trees, and we have lots of alligator junipers, are just going crazy pumping out the gold pollen. The air's gold. Wash definition. That's where stops are run or wide range bar, no follow through, then we head higher. So here, everybody can draw this horizontal line. Lots of stops sitting right underneath it. They run the stops, but look at the close. So David, we think of it like a door. They opened the door, they ran through, they, ran, they saw tigers, and they ran away. Does that help? That's in one of the DVDs. I think I think it might be in the first, the very first DVD we did, which is the the uh, the, the basic seminar. Um, there's a whole presentation on doors. We used to call these doors, which maybe we should all the time now. But anyway, so <clears throat> is it a wash? Is it a wash? I'll leave it for you. Now, sometimes washes are made by whales. This one could be. Maybe he figured people were getting fat and sassy trying to buy the low, so he pushed it lower to buy more. Could be. Again, same thing. Easy to see the horizontal line. Thinks it's in an uptrend. Knows there are stops underneath. See, these were easier to know about and feel comfortable when market makers were banks and institutions, but the people doing the washes are no longer the banks and institutions. That's illegal. If you get caught doing that, you go to jail. You can only trade for customers. So it has to be speculators like me, hedge funds, people, things like that. But, you know, it's pretty easy for us to spot where stops are going to be and or people talk. Not saying, I'm just saying. For the most part, I'm not in that network. I don't want to be. I don't want people to call me and tell me their trade ideas. Trade it yourself. But it's pretty easy to see. All right, so we're heading higher. We're testing this median line to this modified shift. We're, t we're coming up to the outer parallel of the red downsloper. We've got a energy point right here. And remember, at the energy point, it doesn't mean price is going to turn there. Price can, it's, it becomes extremely volatile when you get to an energy point. Price will either turn or accelerate. It very seldom goes into a range. And here you can see we accelerate right through the energy point. So we zoom both of them. In fact, let's say... In little letters and what do we expect after a zoom a retest and if we don't get a retest sign of strength No retest, no retest, closing on the high, no retest, no retest, we leave a high, no follow through yet, no follow through yet, no follow through yet, no follow through yet, no follow through yet. Have we had a zoom that we've identified in the last week or so or two weeks 
where we haven't had a retest? I think we had one, and it was a moonshot. So we're at about 12 out of 13 or 15 out of 14, 14 out of 15, something like that, right? That, and we're... Now, here's the important point. Take a look. We accelerated at the energy point. Where do we stop? Right at the gold median line. See the crystalline structure? See prices played out at all these median lines, one after the other, after the other, after the other. But this is just not once, Dawn. This is now we got three median lines and they're all calling each other's turns. See it? That's crystalline. Now, <clears throat> I feel good about this bottom, but let's see what we get out of that. So now we make a low, and where are we where are we making a low? Since the fuchsia couldn't pull it, and gold did. Are you getting upside clues? Um, I'm going to give that as a test. That's not that far away from me, Timmy. And where are we turning, Tim? But where? But where are we? We're right on the fuchsia median line. See it? So I'm not going to spit on the fuchsia median line. Is that enough to say a perfect pivot on the gold? Oh, yeah, that's a perfect pivot on the gold here. Sure. And is this close enough? Yeah. I mean, we have, you know, this is like um, there's so many planets pulling on price here that this is pretty close for, for gold. This is pretty close for magenta. So these are these are all within five bars of the energy point, so we're all good, right? That's the rule, five bars. Spit on it, that's a good term. <laughs> Thanks, Tim. And we head back higher. Retest the gold. Head back higher. All right, trying to break through the gold on the downside. Second close outside, close right back inside. So this low held. Okay, heading higher, don't close on our high. Let's see what happens. Close lower, close lower. Okay, so I mark this high and this high, and I put in a small maximum excursion line. Do you see that? Okay. So let's see what happens to that. At this point, if you ask me what I think, since nobody's asked me, I'm I'm just enjoying how nicely these lines are playing out. Do you find this pleasing, Don? And here and here we are testing the upper magenta again. The gold's holding. We're gonna find out about the gold now. I mean. I don't have that much of an opinion because we are making higher highs now and we are making we were making higher highs now we're making lower highs so I'm not really sure yet where we are I thought we were due for range extension to the upside we may still be so that's the one thing that has thrown me off a little bit as I thought we were due. If you want confirma confirmation, you get a lot here. Yeah, but for what though, BJ? See, I don't see the piece. Yeah, it is hitting all the lines, but I don't see the directional piece yet. It is hitting all my lines, and I like that. So that makes me want to pay attention because I think there'll be a clue. Here's what I'm thinking. I love the way it's hitting all the lines. Can you show me the direction, please? That's kind of how I feel. I get it. Now just do me a favor. Give me a peek and show me the direction. That's how I feel. But it's hitting the up and down lines. Yeah. Now show me which way it's going to go. 
all the lines are doing what they're supposed to do. But, and you just saw me draw a down sloping maximum excursion line, which is fairly close to the pink down sloping modified shift. I don't know if you can hear me pouring. I'm trying some. Dr. Gary wants me to drink more water. I'm pouring this special water from Dr. Robert Myers, a good friend of Gary's, that uh, it's called Super Water. It's it's slippery. It's more slippery, and it's also got a different pH than water. So I'll see what that's like. I was in an opinion of strong pull-ups, but no stop at the first energy point. Was that a mistake on my part too? Too early. I was thinking that we were going to bust this high and have range extension. That hasn't happened. So at this point, Kareem, I'm I'm back at okay. I like the crystalline structure, but wh where you know where are we going? So Kareem, I'm kind of there. Price now drifting to the right uh, right off the gold median line and not making higher highs. It's a concern. It's a concern in this sense, Dawn. Um, the pink is still working, right? And all these miners help me confirm that price is crystal and, and hitting lines. I'm pretty sure I'm going to see an easy line solution to this whole thing. Oh, I like that, Timmy. Email that, email that to me. Anyway, so let's see what this maximum excursion line does, and let's see how the gold plays out, and let's see how the magenta or whatever we want to call this a fuchsia whatever on the way I don't what color is fuchsia green anybody pink all right so it might be fuchsia it's probably magenta huh Ooh, that's that's weird it, it does slip right down your throat it's very strange tastes more watery somehow anyway all right here we go So we continue to trade on the switchback of the gold. We're still within the pink downsloping. Okay, now we've got our box. Don't forget our box. See it? And it's an inside box. So everybody see the, bo the box is bounded by two lower and higher boxes, right? So it, hopefully... We're going to get some resolution, but at least at the moment, higher highs, lower low, whichever way this breaks out should extend. Okay. I'm expecting, I don't, I'm flipping a coin here now, right? So for me, which way are we going? Not sure. I'm going to let price tell me. Does that make sense to everybody? So I'm going to wait for the break out of the box. A lateral energy buildup. I like that. That's a nice sound. I have to use that word. Outside bar higher. Testing our maximum excursion line. Boy, it didn't last very long, did it? We've now zoomed the maximum excursion line and the up the down sloping pink modified shift. So sad. Now I was expecting range extension and a small gap. Uh, that's just a, if you mean right here, that's just basic, it's like here, it's just the way price is printed out by e-signal, it's no big deal. Alright, so this is a zoom of this down sloping, upper parallel, and my maximum excursion line. We haven't hit the box. Whichever way we break out of the box is probably going to give us a clue. I had been expecting range extension to the upside. We stalled. Maybe we stalled because we were out of energy. 
whichever way we break out of this box, I'm hoping is going to give me my clues. But I just love the structure in here. The way every median line forced another median line to be spawned, one right after the other. It's just beautiful. And it tells me that this market is, in a mathematical sense, orderly. Does that make any sense? We can do things like double the range because we know the mathematics on it. We can do things, I mean, you know, from the whole shot, we can do double the range, all kinds of things. All right, so now we've zoomed the box. So I'm expecting upside extension. That's what I was expecting to begin with. We slowed down, restored energy. Now I'm going to go back to that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. And, of course, I didn't get long. And maybe you see a trade in here. Too much going on for me here. Plus, I'm, I'm such a tourist at this point, just enjoying the bounces off the median lines and the structure here and the structure here and the structure over here and the structure down here. Just structure nested within structure. Gold median line not helpful anymore. Can you shift it, please? Um, sure. I can try. Well... Sure, I can try. Oh boy, was that lucky. All right, sure. Uh, I don't know if I like it, but I don't know that it does much for me, Don. But okay, I'll leave it. Just so so. All right, we're testing this prior high. Let's see if I can extend that. So we've zoomed the median line. Where's our retest? <laughs> I got you, Timmy. Um, we've zoomed this magenta downsloping median line as well as our maximum excursion line, and we don't have a retest yet. Sign of? Anybody? Sign of strength, yeah. Uh, all right, well, two, three. I'll take a risk and say this. Try and say it. should say this let me try this because I don't know that it's not gonna, that's not going to retest and now we've zoomed again by the way right so let's see what we get so now we're one two three four five bars no retest that that's the end of my tolerance at that point retest don't count so this is a sign of strength. And we've moved a nice ways past our box and prior highs. So I've got my range extension. Let's see how much range extension I can get out of this. Add two warning lines on pink as it looks like it's gone through. Well, okay. But at some point, guys, we're going to be drawing too much. I don't even know if I can get the darn. Where's the pink? can't sorry there's our first warning line let's see what we get let's see where it ends up consolidate and run close on our high no follow through at all so I mark it and I put up a maximum excursion line starting to see another part of the theme today just put those max it's funny how that doesn't look parallel. It's an optical illusion because it's an extension of this line. But it's a little bit of a theme today, that, which is crystalline structure and, and the use of minor maximum excursion lines. You see them? I, 
have to say this. This is good water. <laughs> this is darn good water. After a zoom, if no retest in five bars means what? Means strength. If you're zooming to the top, if you're zooming to the bottom, it would mean weakness. Okay? If you're looking for an entry, David, and you zoom, you're looking for a retest. If you test, you're looking for a retest, it's five bars. Do you draw the maximum excursion line if there is no follow-up? That's right. I wonder if this is significant. If it is, I'll, I'll draw it. If, it. if it gets blown right away, of course, you can just erase it. And you know what, Kareem? It may never come into play. Um, I drew, uh, for example, at the moment, we don't know later on, but at the moment, this one down here has never come into play, right? But I'll just put it out there and we'll see. I mean, if it's, it doesn't, it's not going to hurt me. If price makes some excursions, who knows? Because this is so so crystalline in here, this area is so crystalline. Anything that has frequency that's coming from this area, I'm interested in. Does that make sense? Um, just thought of a trick when you have all these forks. Let your A points go through the bar point you select, but let the handle run past the typical A point of the backside. This way you keep that select point out of traffic for later. Um, okay. I like that. Okay, we'll have to practice it though. If I try and do it right now, I'll hurt myself, if you know what I mean. It's easier when I'm doing this live and just nesting my lines, but when I try and go back and just make them disappear for you guys, I tell you, sometimes it's like like the gold. I had to just take it off because I couldn't. I could never grab it. So I I finally just said, okay, I'll just I'll draw it in real time. And you saw me fumble. I, I just I with the line in, in real time and then going back and trying to clean up the chart so that it would appear I couldn't do it so oh well anyway so we're up here we haven't made it to the gold I don't know that this gold is important but we'll see now we're pulling back all right so now zoom one two three four five I'm gonna give that as a retest So now we're like 15 out of 17. And let's see what happens after the retest. Okay. Pulling back. Leave a high. No follow through. Playing back at the gold. Playing back at the gold. Now we've... For those of you keeping score... Zoom. Retest. And this is a test. Of the Biggest bar for, yeah, for quite a while. And retested and tested not only our gold, but also our pink or magenta crystalline line. So, Dawn, your modified shift idea worked pretty good. And we're within five bars of the energy point. Yep. Do you ever get rid of your median line? Sure. But the future, well, the future line is helping me, though, isn't it? But, yes, I do. Kareem, I'm, I, I will have to tell you, though, after you do this for a while, you can look right through them. It, that doesn't bother you. I would have been tempted to buy the test of the middle line with a stop under the zoom. Uh, oh, okay. By the middle line, we'll stop at the zoom. Okay. 
you know what? That's what stops are for, buddy. As long as you had a solid stop. And you didn't. But if you did, I'd be good with that. The lack of a stop would have filtered this trade, wouldn't it, Timmy? So, let's see what we get. We're at the gold upsloping median or lower parallel. We're at the upper parallel, the fuchsia, or magenta, or pink upper parallel. We're within five bars of our energy point. We get another head standard. We come down, make a low, but close on our high. When we close on our high, golly, almost said something bad there. There we go. I don't even want to do that. I just want to do that. I'm going to mark this MLX. I don't even think that's right. Sorry. I'm going to confirm this as MLX. I'm going to say that's a major high. Does that make sense to everybody? Does the five bar count retest rule inside the zoom bar? Can you restate that for me, David? I'm not sure I understand. Sorry. It was showing it was showing so much strength, that's why I wanted to buy it, says Timmy. Yeah, but that's how you see that's that's you, this is a breakout bar. That you gotta have a stop, dude. That filter will will take care of you. No, you don't get to use a mini stop. Sorry, you're busted. Right? That, that'll stop. See, that'll. So Shane says he got long here. Nice job, Shane. Uh, stop where, Shane? Stop would have to have been below the box. 45 ish. Uh, um, well, really needs to be about down here, but okay. Needs to be about 39, so let's measure that. Just, I'm just saying, 60. You got plenty of room. You got a, you got 30 pips in the end, so you, you're fine. But you need to be five to seven pips below here, okay? But you're good. You got plenty of room, right? Five to seven pips below here, and this is a swing low, so five to seven pips below here. But you got plenty of space, and you're going for the upper. What upper? You mean of the gold? Shane? Gold upper. Okay. Good. All right. Let's see what we get from here. So I mark this in and say, is this going to be a significant low? And you can see I extend out an advanced multi-pivot line because we close on our high. Shane's long. Good for you, buddy. And testing this gold modified shift. Now we're testing the bottom end of our box. Now notice, are we making higher lows? That's the that's the first thing I'm asking myself at this point. I'm not ready to trade, but are we making higher lows? Kareem says, for your stop, uh, it's not my stop. Why pick under 39 instead of 57? Well, uh, first of all, again, this is not my trade because this is the bottom of the range. This is not a swing, Kareem. This is a swing. This is in the middle of this range. This is a swing trade. 57 is just noise. Yep. Okay. Looks good afterwards, but the buyers are going to be down here. They're not going to be up here. And we want to hide behind the buyers, okay? So we want to be five to seven pips underneath here because we're going to be hiding with our friends. Same reason up here. Where's our stop up here, Kareem? Do you know? 
if you're going to buy like Timmy was thinking about buying. Where's our stop? Sorry, we're going long. No, it's not under 84. Anybody else want to guess? It would still have to be down here. Kareem, it's got to be five to seven points below the swing. This is the last swing low all the way down here. See that, Kareem? Yeah. So there's no trade, right? So this is a good filter. Okay, I think I'm going to get long. Where's the stop? Oh, crap, it's all the way down here. Okay, I'm not going to take the trade. Then price blows through here, and you go, well, thank God I didn't take the trade, right? Right? If You, you guys should, as you plan your trades, that's why I'm telling you to make sure you write this stuff down and ask these questions because it'll keep you out of trades that you should not be in. This is impulse trading. As Tim said, and I quote, and I'm, I'm not picking on him, he knows it. It it looks so strong. I want to get in. It looks so strong, right, Tim? Mm -mm. You weren't stupid. It looks strong, right? It makes you feel like I should. I need to get long. Look how strong this thing is, right? So when it elicits that response in you, the next thing that you have to ask yourself is, okay, I get that, but where's the stop? Period. Feels equ uh, equ equals emotion. That's right, Rebecca. We don't want to be impulsive or emotional. There's no stop until the last swing higher low. That's right. Period. Okay. So we've left the box, and now we've got this box and this cluster, this nested cluster of lower highs, if this is not going to be just a cascade lower, somewhere in here I need to spawn a higher low. Does that make sense? Even if I want to get short, I'm going to want a higher low because I want price to make a pendulum pullback. If I want to get long, I'm going to want price to make a pendulum pullback and then come back and pull back. So no matter what here, somewhere in here I should spawn a higher low. Or I've just got a mess again. Um, we had a mess before we got to crystalline structure. But I think the structure is so good that price is going to spawn something for me to trade off of. Make sense? That's why I was so interested in this. You know, a lot of times I'll just turn away from Yen. But when everything started to bounce at the right place, when all the all the structure unfolded nicely, I thought, okay, I think it's time to play play pay attention to Yen. There might be something interesting here. All right, so we the test holds. We make a high close in the center. That makes me think or wonder is this MLY now I'm not that sold on this being confirmation because I've left one one two three lower box tops so to speak so is that confirmation we did break these small tops is and we did stop where we were supposed to is that confirmation I'm not sure but I'm gonna mark it as a maybe Follow me? And remember I said once, well, more than once before, the A and B decisions are not that important until you get close to C, are they? Any questions on that? I need three alternating pivots. I don't necessarily have to put everything in concrete until we get close to C. Then that's when I can go, oh, wait, I don't like this low as well as this one, or this isn't the confirmation for the low this is. 
So it's okay if I let it kind of hang out there. But the idea is in here that I need to spawn a higher low. Now, if I if I make this X, which is my A pivot, and this B, and this my B pivot, what's my median line going to be? Upslope or downslope? More than three people there. Come on. Participation, please. There you go. Come on. We're myelinating. I want you to think about it, and I want you to enunciate it because it'll help you in the long run. Every time you draw a median line, say, okay, what's the slope look like? What does this median line look like? You should be able to see it already. The moment you think this might be the B point, at that point, you should be able to see the potential median line. Maybe not exactly where the A is, but you should be able to start to see it. Okay? Get in that habit. It's likely to be a downsloper. If it's a downsloper, why would I be willing to draw it? What would I be looking for? Okay. Uh, C, a short. What else? Lower major high. Well, wh what if it's not lower? It doesn't have to be lower. Well, let's go forward. Let's hold that thought. Let's go forward and see if it becomes more clear. Okay? Okay, somewhere in here, it needs to be a higher high. Otherwise, I just have a mess. And I'm going to be trading right back into this goop. Logical place for C? Okay. Does that make sense? If, if we just get back into here, we're just marking time. And I'm just going to get cut to bits if I try and trade, right? Does that make sense to anyone? <coughs> Excuse me. So I want range extension. Get me out of the noise. I haven't taken out one of these nested highs yet. All right. I draw. Uh, who asked about frequency early on? What's the difference between frequency and maximum excursion? Somebody did it. I'm sorry. Okay, David. So see how I just connected these bottoms? This isn't maximum excursion. I just connected a bunch of bottoms. They look like they have about the same slope. It's a multi-pivot line, okay? Do you see that? Now, I want to know if it's important. It might not be, but it might. I draw these all the time. And generally, I try and, <laughs> I try and extend them. There we go. I can get it. Okay. So let me extend it out and see if it's important. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's absolutely useless. If it is useless, you can always dump it. Okay. So we're crawling up. We're coming to, again, we're on our third nested lower high. So much for my excursion or my whatever line. We come to the test of the gold. Now we're on the back side of this little frequency line. And notice that I drew in a minor maximum excursion line off the test of the gold. I was lucky. See that? Okay, I told you that was one of the themes today, minor maximum excursion lines. Do you have to do it? You don't have to do anything. But you might want to. We'll see. Okay. How about that? That'll wake you up, huh? I guess it, maybe I was going to say it's, it's the largest bar on the board, but maybe not. Maybe it's the same size as this, but this one seemed to come out of nowhere. This one seemed to come out of nowhere. Did you sit bar by bar drawing this up, or did you ha leave every now and then and get fresh eyes? Oh, you know, at this point, once it started to go flat and it's, through, uh, and it's out of the crystalline, I didn't sit here for this long. 
I went I went, I went to sleep uh, right here Timmy and believe me at this point my wife pretty much you know and I agree at 4:30 it's time to be out of the bad cave unless I have a trade going and I'll walk in every once in a while if I if I'm stocking a trade but if I'm not stocking the trade no so I'll come back and draw and at, at this point it's prime time so that's easy but like uh, in the middle of the night here well I'm up I'm up right here okay so I get to see this maximum excursion line formed now I'm this is a Tuesday so I am teaching so this is the breakfast session now I'm watching I'm looking for a trade now we're in the midday and past the midday and now it's time to cook actually it's, it's time actually for uh, Sean's batting lessons <coughs> by the way cross your fingers next Monday Sean's baseball tryouts for the high school I think he's pretty much unofficially on the team but that being said boy is he nervous hard to be around him right now all the boys they've been hit, playing rugby and going bowling together every Friday and Saturday because they're like all the guys that were on the team last year because they're all nervous anyway when this line pops well, I say to myself is does this confirm this or does this new high confirm this does it matter really anyone have you guys fallen asleep I, I'm trying to get to the trade no no one wants to type okay can you hear me okay there you go all right all right let's get to the trade so I marked this now as MLY now I'm gonna take the question mark off now I'm looking for C so to speak and Remember that this maximum excursion line flopped right out of the crystalline section. Remember that? Which is why I said anything that's formed out of that crystalline structure, and I've got another one down below, I want to know about because it was so perfect. If it extends forward, it's like that shell unfolding. Maybe it's going to give me something important. Well, we make a high close near our low. I mark it. Let's see what we get out of it. Lower, 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 lower. I think that's enough to call this Z, which would be three. That allows me to draw a median line, which is the wrong color for me, but normally I make down slopers. Loop. There we go. I'm going to actually change the color on this because it, it really bothers me. Uh, no. How about two? That's not bad. And uh, let me just make them. All right, so now I've got a down sloping median line that if you must, if you marked MLY, you must be looking for the an up ML. Why is that? X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Why would I be looking for an up median line, Kareem? And the A and the C are spawned off a maximum excursion line, which should show me the top that goes right back to the heart of the crystalline structure. Can you follow that, Kareem? The, I, well, sometimes the, the letters get confusing. I get it, but I'm running out of letters. I mean, I could mark this little I, little two I, and little three I's, but you know, I, you have to get creator at, creative after. So, so Dawn, have you had enough median lines yet? Okay, good. 
So I'm happy. I've got my range extension. We're all the way up to 103 and a half. I've got a down sloping median line that's formed right at the A and the C are formed right at this maximum excursion line that goes all the way back into the crystalline structure. That's where it's supposed to run out of energy. What am I missing? Yep, test, retest, and the stop. You got it. I, you know what? By the time I get confirmation, I'll be all the way down here, Kareem. So I'm willing to put my stop on the table. I mean, you know, sorry, my confirmation on the table. I, it's okay with me. And we've come, down, come enough down here, and this is formed by the crystalline structure that I'm going to call this a pseudo swing. I, I think this is a swing top. And I'd really like to trade right in here. That'd be nice, huh? We'll see. Make a low. Leave a box. We got a box going. Testing the box again. So much for our, by the way, so much for our energy point. That would have been nice, but oh well. Swing it up. Test the median line, no separation. Test the median line, no separation. Oop, busted. Huh. Second close outside the median line. Starting to think I don't know what to do with this. Closing lower. All right. I see this. We talked about this, uh, I think, two weeks ago. Here's our C pivot. You don't know how much I was hoping that would continue. Yeah. Oh, Shane was long. Yeah, I'm sorry, Shane. Fulcrum. Everybody see it? Close on our high, no follow through. Wide range bar, which takes out the high but closes in the lower half. Fulcrum. Everybody remember me going through these? So I've been collecting these. Me likey. That, so this is like a teeter totter. And if we get any pullback at all, We should see more pressure to the downside, right? Well, yeah, it is difficult to identify. You have to practice it, Jose. Even I have to practice it. It's 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 wrapped up into this. Let me try and give you the pieces. Closing, busting through a major line, closing on our high. That ends up being the high for that move. Then a run down, and generally a wide range bar that makes a new high but closes in its lower half, and that's the fulcrum. Try and see if you can find those. That's what I look for. Well, let's see what it does. What would it take for me to be interested in getting short? Uh, not necessarily. Yeah, then I don't know what the oh test retest wide range bar and the test retest okay but what sellers showing up okay it's somebody other than Shane come on a good sign of weakness well what would be a good sign of weakness break below the median line and close yes thank you a and Andrew says I'm not gonna wait for all the way down here Dawn that's too, that's too much for me Andrew says if we recapture the median line that's a sign of weakness. So then I'll just want, that will be my sign of weakness. Then I'll want separation on a test and retest. Does that make sense? So let me write that down.
So I want a sign of weakness. I want separation on a test, retest on the downside. If you wait till under the green median line for a short, would you still have your stop? Well, we'll just have to see that, won't we? Let's see what unfolds, Kareem. Okay. With me? Okay, now you might think I'm busted here. Wide range bar closes on its high, and I think I might be busted here. I'm scratching my head going, that's not what I need. How about that? An even wider range outside bar that closes. Yeah, but look at this probe, Jimmy. Buyers, sellers immediate, these sellers immediately showed up and said, thank you. The door opened, they were there, and they said, thank you. Right back down. The two tests of the green median line closes below the median line. I always thought that was the separation. What is the separation? Um, well, I, what I want now is because we went above it, I want to I want to see five to seven pips below this green. Okay? Inside. No, not not no. We've already gone through any and all this is meaningless now because we went through. Now I need to see separation. Follow me, Petra. Nice outside bar with a close below the median line. Yep, BJ's got it. Petra, you got me? Okay, so let's see if we get it. Shane says one more bar. <sighs> Sorry you traded to Shane. All right, well, you, you, st you still should have taken money out of it. How about that? There's a nice bar. Great separation. It's more. Let's 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 just do it official. Nineteen down to eleven, so it's eight pips. That's convincing to me. I got two closes back inside the green down sloping median line, which is spawned off of the crystalline structure. Right? Everybody see it? Petri, you see it? Anybody have any questions? Does everybody know what I'm thinking? Other than this water sure tastes good. <laughs> this is the best water I've ever had. So let's look. So I'm still above my C. It's it, okay. I'm still above my C point. I'm certainly above all this excursion. That's my go no go. And if we get anywhere near this green median line or upper parallel, whatever this is, I'm in. Everybody get that? That's exactly what I was looking for. So. See the importance of asking, what what would it take for me? Even though when I asked it, I mean, I saw the lever, but then the, the next bar, I immediately went, oh, crap. I suppose this should probably be here. I went, oh, crap. Well, what would it take for me to get short? Well, it would take me to get underneath this green median line with separation. Then a test, retest. Am I asking for a lot? Maybe. But now I've got my test. Now I've got my separation. And within five bars, I have to swing back and still be able to afford my stop. Yes? Okay, let's see what we get. We go up. We test the upper parallel. We close right on it. I'm in. And I got 30 pips to stop sitting there.
probably about I'm probably running something about like that and we're, we're playing with our smaller inside maximum excursion line running out of energy there as well as the gold lower parallel the question is can we take these out or am I going to get stopped down so we're in now taking a little heat looks a little better got a couple pips in it yahoo okay that worms my cockles as they say where's my profit target that's a great question thank you where's your profit target great question where would you put a profit target green center line okay let's try that that's not gonna cut it risking 30 to make 55 is not gonna work lower median line risking 30 to make 110 that that'll work that's also the purple coming right out of the magenta right that makes sense so green to green how's that work for you I have another idea but I'll show you afterwards what's your question Kareem you asking me for a question or you ask me if I'm asking you a question one of us is confused and it's probably me do you like that as a profit target you didn't take a short and fulcrum why I did take a short what do you mean I'm short right here let me zoom back out everybody knows where the profit target is what's your question you mean at the at the fulcrum is that what you're asking me cream no, at the fulcrum isn't for me to get short. The fulcrum is is a sign to me that the flow has changed. There are now more sellers than buyers, and this bar nails it right there. But the fulcrum, when you see the high and then the wide range bar that's outside that closes in its lower half, I'm going to use that as the fulcrum. That's when I can draw my fulcrum and say, I think we've changed hands from buyers to sellers. Now, <clears throat> you might even make the fulcrum is the only sign the movement has changed except for the lower high of the fulcrum. Well, Bob, here's another sign, but it's very, very subtle. And I would never rely on it. Although, you know what? I, this is, sorry, I shouldn't say that. This is the day of, I got I to gotta draw it the other way. This is the day of, I, I couldn't rely on it till here, but this is the day of inside maximum excursion lines. And we do have an inside maximum excursion line. Right? And so, what does that mean? That means we are now making, so, now it's already gone, so I'll try this. You have to be thinking this or once the fulcrum pops or you're going to miss this trade. Once the fulcrum pops on this bar, on this bar right here, you have to be thinking, uh oh, this is the lower high. Does that make sense? It. I admire that you didn't take it. I make mistakes by being too early and get stopped out. How do I train to get better? Well, <clears throat> Kareem, if you'd taken a trade in this area, I'm not wild about it, but let's say you had, and you'd used a 30 pip stop, you wouldn't have gotten stopped out. But this fulcrum is a reliable indicator with lower highs? I think it is. 
I need to draw more Bob, but I'm finding it reliable. How about that? Now, the moment I don't find it reliable, I will tell you, um, I don't see them in every chart. But every time I see one, I'll show you. And if you guys see them and find them counter, you know, you know useless, please drop me an email with a chart. But <coughs> so far, I'm finding them useful. Are they going to work 100% of the time? No. Okay, to me, this market was most... Wait, you guys are typing too fast for me. For me, this market was most probably still going up. Yeah, but that's why you wait for it to get inside of the green down sloping median line, Bob. And that's Andrews is adamant about this. This first excursion out, you don't get don't get excited. It's okay. The close back in is a sign of weakness. Now, if you take out on a sliding parallel this excursion, okay, then you can throw this median line away. Andrews was very adamant about that. Tim, this is a little more advanced in that we aren't using sliding parallels. Yep, attempting to lean on a slider would have missed this trade so far. Um, yeah, that is true. If you'd use a slider, you'd missed it. Most of the time when you trade, you seem to always nail price at the right area. This trade looks so complicated. Would the MLZ level broken a better indication to consider going short? Well, let's see. <clears throat> Jose, I never like this much confirmation. I want to be close to the highs. We talked about the a trade earlier on, and I just said, hey, we're so far down the road, I don't want to trade. That, I'm so, here's the thing, Jose. I'm, I'm so patient. And if you go back and look at this, there's probably 10 trades that I've, uh, that I've passed on. And the reason why is because I want to trade in this area close to to a major high or low I don't want to trade near the center I don't want to wait for confirmation that's too far away from me look if I wait for confirmation I'll have given up 60 pips do you understand that this I don't know how much this thing is gonna go remember if 60 pips we marked it out we were only talking about 110 to the profit target right so if I give away 60 pips to enter I know I don't have any risk reward anymore. I, and I listen, I'm not saying it's easy. It's the patience part that's the most difficult. There's a lot of damn. I could have got short there and now it's going down. Damn. I could have got long there and now it's going up. But the closer you are to the bone, the more likely when you are right, you're going to get four five six to one not 1.1 to one 1.1 1. 1 to one is not going to work for you in the long run you're going to lose money <coughs> shane are you stopped out at this point what are you doing just curious i'm uh, just just curious more than anything else are we taking your profit stopped on the next oh okay sorry didn't mean to say that yep whoop bing but profit stopped, right? I've mentioned this in the past. You appear to wait until the market is vulnerable. But with your size, unless this is just a small trade and not the fund, do you tend to tip these markets based upon your action? Uh, it's a good question. It Remember, Timmy, it did go up for two bars after I sold. All right? So for 40 minutes, it went higher. But on each of these higher bars, you know, they weren't closing on the extremes. On this high was crappy um, I remember we basically go to one person and ask for price we don't we don't blanket I had your lines drawn but didn't take the advantage of them made just under two risk work well that's pretty good though Shane you know for you not feeling happy about it that that's pretty good actually if you think about it now <clears throat> Tim if I went out and if I had to sell this much and I went out and blanketed the market shotgunned it with ten traders Follow me, Timmy? Uh, yes, I would have turned the market. And I, and I would have gotten a terrible price. Okay? I do this with one guy. I'll ask a guy for a price on large. He'll make me a price for the whole shot. And the reason why it doesn't always move the market immediately, I mean, he 
will have to work out of it. He might buy some to sell it just like I would. Or I'll manipulate the market myself. Because if I shotgun it and call a bunch of brokers, you know, it, I'm going to end up executing from here to here. But same thing, Timmy, if somebody calls me and asks me for a price in large, I have to make a nice price and I have to, you know, suck it up. Okay? The, we're, we're taking the, the, the place of banks and institutions that used to do this. So this is where the Volcker Rules got it wrong. This is going to make banks and the market less liquid. So does everybody understand why I, why I would call one guy and ask for one price? No. Because other, otherwise, see, I want him, yeah, I don't want everybody to know, and it, to be honest, I want him to have a chance to get out of it because if he can get out of it gracefully, gracefully here, the, then everybody else is going to be short. I'm sorry. Everybody else is going to be long because he's going to be hitting them. He'll be getting out of this with a lot of people over 40 minutes. And then when he tips the market, everybody gets it, and then they all chase the market, but I'm already short. Right? Run, rabbit, run. So now we're through the box. Shane's got his nice two and change to one risk reward. That's nice. Hey, trailing stops. Good job. Another wide range bar lower. I'm very happy. This is, at this point, either this gentleman cutting and running, but I think he was more adept at that. This is, I'm awake, this is prime time London. This is, this is big, fat liquidity. I think he probably unloaded it, and now everybody is long and now understanding that there are some big sellers in the market, and this thing has got some downside momentum. Follow me? And really, I didn't actually start it. The Geneva shag started it right here. That's what the, this is Geneva right here. So, I mean, I was a little bit late to the party. But I wouldn't have sold here. I would have waited for here. But if I'd used a correct stop, it would have worked. But this moved down here, and this was started by the Geneva shag. This is what got me interested. This would, this is what allowed me to sell the retest. And so on and so on. And so these guys are passing it off to somebody. As it pulls back up, I'm passing it off to somebody. They're passing it off to somebody. And finally, it collapses of its own weight. That's how the market works. That's how life works. That's how energy works. Let's see what we get here. Po I apologize for going long. Yeah, that's a that is an education of of what happens inside the market, instead of just buyers and sellers. All right. It's an odd looking little box, but it's about all I can. I mean, I can call the top of this. The bottom of this is a top now, which would be the same as marking this wide range bar. Short of that, I pretty much have kind of pick thin air. Now we've got a box. Double bottoms. We certainly have a bottom if nothing else, right? <clears throat> and we're at our median line. So Dawn, let's, now let's let's measure our median line real quick. Now our median line uh, would earn us, well, it's two to one now. Better than it was. Can't move my stop yet. Nope. No, 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 no. You guys should be at break even. Yeah? We're at the median line. You should be at break even now. You're at two to one, right? Everybody agree? Because price could turn at the median line. 
Yeah, I'm trying to find what that Timmy. This is really specious. There's a word that you don't hear much anymore. I'm trying to find something to mark to help me out later. Yeah, word of the day. I could have done here, I guess. That's fine too. But you'll see why. In fact, I will mark this. But <clears throat> you'll see why this is actually a nice little pullback now that I see it. But you'll see why I'm trying to do what I'm doing in a second. I think. All right. <clears throat> Timmy rightly says, "Why is this important high?" Okay. You guys should be a break even. Now we come up. Okay, now do you like the line better, Tim? Let's think of it as a reverse engineered line. There's a, there's a little bit of art going on here, wouldn't you say? Okay, Shane. I'm, I'm glad you took some money out. I'll see you in a little while. All right, so now we are backing up. Retest the line and goodbye. Another wide range bar lower and oh, we don't have any left. So I'll have to grab this and say zoom. Have to go thank all right, cream, take care. We're not that far. All we're gonna do is box in profits, buddy. See you in three hours. No, it's two hours. See in two hours, cream. We've zoomed the meeting line. Uh, we have five to retest. And you can see, if you guys want to break even, at that point, you need to be moving here for a stop and this is 15 pips look at your ATR it can be 16 pips but you don't need the 30 you just want the ATR measure above the box everybody get it we're trying to box in stops take some keep money in your in our pockets All right when we get two closes below here now I'm going to move to here Because we're pretty close to my profit target, aren't we? If you think about it. So I'm going to be aggressive as well. And we haven't retested yet. And we still haven't retested yet. We basically get to the lower parallel, but I don't. my order's not filled. My order's at the lower parallel. <coughs> Excuse me. Overshoot, undershoot. Yep. Yep. So, it's prime time. I'm watching it. I'm not happy. But we'll see what we get. Maybe the next bar will fill me. No. Crap, as my mom would say. Key wrap. That's what my mom used to say. Three bars higher. And still not happy. So at that point, when we get three bars higher, watch what I do. I could draw it under here, but I just go to the low of the prior bar and I say, if you know what, if you give me that, you know, like my friend Gail, Jesus, if you just give me that, I'll take my profit and go away. I'm surprised with the overshoot above, you didn't have it up a more a little more generous above the lower green. Problem is, though, I'd be losing my risk reward, Timmy. I need it down here to get my risk reward. Right? Because when we set it up, we were barely over three to one, unless we got to the now. Time has moved on, but that's now. So now it's four to one. And now we've got in, we don't have a horizontal stop in, we still have a sliding stop. <clears throat> Let's see what plays out. There's our box, we hope. 
makes a high closes in its lower third okay good no follow through to the upside see we should retest I don't want to retest so one two three four five so I'm gonna say hello So no retest should mean a sign of weakness, which means I should get filled, but so far no fill. Feeling better? Feeling better? Uh, no. Right back in the soup. All right, back to the box. And maybe you want to put your profit at the box and make it a horizontal profit target. You could certainly do that. That's not what I chose to do. Looking at it now, it certainly makes logical sense. You could also just stay with the graybeards. Get me out, yeah. You could also just stayed with the lower parallel. How many people would have just stayed with the lower parallel? Okay, if you stay with the lower parallel, I like that inside green slider you drew. Okay, now if you stay with the lower parallel, you have to make sure that you box in stops, right? Because we're very, very close to getting to the lower parallel. So we don't want any pullback to give back too much money, right? Does that make sense? So if you stay with the lower parallel, you've got a box in profits 15 ticks above the box, which just happens to be the downsloping median line. See that? I'm out at my slider. You got to have your stop in if you stayed. Some of you are staying. So let's see what you get. And I had plenty of time to get my, you know, it's hard to get filled all at once. Now here's the, Timmy. Here's a point. Here's a here's an area where you might say, "Did you cause a turn?" Because look at the bars. It's like, oh wait, what's this guy doing? And look at the close. So maybe this guy just laid, you know, just got rid of the risk right away. I'm not going to finesse this. I don't want to be short down here. I long down sharp. Sorry, short down here. I just I just want out. Just get me out of this. And I'll make it on the rebound. Who I don't know. I don't care. But he's got plenty of time. Look at price. It's not doing anything. Could just be a retest of the upper line. Yeah, this is what Andrews said. And here's your... I like him within five, but you know what? The market doesn't always care what I like. One more time. I hate when Ensign does that. I must have hit something. Hang on. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Some kind of... Oh, there we go. Momentum. Ooh. Squiggly lines. All right. There we go. Um, <coughs> this could be the retest. Let's see if I can grab it. Which, you know... That is what Andrew says. When you zoom, you will get a retest. Well, okay. There's the retest. So the guy that I bought him from has plenty of time, plus or minus 10 pips. I have been learning Ensign 10, and it seems to work better. Okay, well, you may have to give me lessons. I will say he's made some changes in this, like drawing lines and, and grabbing stuff that is not working as well as it used to. And when I ask him to fix it, I'm not getting much of a response, which makes me think he's putting more work in Ensign 10 than this. So, uh, 
Yeah. You know what that means, BJ, right? You know what you know what's you know what's in my future. But I'll limp along as long as I can. Shane's already learning, so. Yeah, pro probably instant windows probably gone, but we'll see. Well, why would he keep two versions anyway, even though he said he was gonna? So now we're got what are we getting? We're getting higher lows and lower highs. And we'll have to see where that leads. If you're still short, that's okay with you. You do not want these highs to get taken out. You want the lows to get taken out, right? Another retest. Okay, so far so good. So far so good. So far, so good. Playing around with that median line. Okay. Well, median line's got good frequency, doesn't it? And the sliding parallel is reflected pretty pretty well up here. Okay. That should make you feel a little better. That sucks. Two closes outside. Three closes outside. Trying to get back in. We do get back in. Two closes inside, back outside. So this median line's got all kinds of frequency written all over it. And you can see our box has done its thing. Your stop's definitely in the, in the right place, don't you think? You know, if you don't... If you don't want to take your profit down here, if you want the immediate, the lower parallel, remember this, time's on your side. If you're willing to pay this to grab all the way down here, you're making all kinds of money because of time, right? This will really extend your profits, probably another 30 pips. So let's see what happens. So that's why you would do it. For anybody that says, well, why wouldn't you just take your profit? Well, because time's on your side. And if you can get it down to the median line, you'll have picked up quite a bit more. Uh, I think that's officially stopped. Yeah. So now we're all the way back to the upper parallel. So let's squeegee in. The worst you would have done is that, which is risking 30 to make 70. It's not that bad. Yes, it's not, you know, four to one, but it's not bad. For being profit stopped out, that's not that bad. Right? Most of you like would like to average 2.2 to 1. I assume, right? Not that many of you get 2.2 to 1 as your average every month. And this was not range extension that gave you 5, 6, 7 to 1 opportunities anyway. You played for it, and this is what you got. That's not so bad. Let's squeegee it in. Let me take this out. If I can, yeah. <coughs> All right, so here we are. Here's our crystalline structure. I know it looks like spaghetti at the moment. One last O, oh, by the way. I can find the darn thing. Okay, I'll do it the other way. <laughs> what a mess. Look at all this drawing. Okay.
So if we take our high, which actually was a multi-pivot high right here, see it? Okay, I'll do it. The, I'll do it the easy way. Okay, I'm going to Anson Town. You guys can convince me. Hopefully, hopefully it won't take me long. Oh. Does it have that page, BJ? Is that page avail available as a misclick? Sheesh. Oh, okay. Take care, Sean. Okay. Well, I'm sure it is. I'm sure I'll be able to screw it up. Anyway, let's see if I can grab this. There we go. 100% of doubling the range is something like that. Let me show you where the double is. MLX where our crystalline structure is going on, double the range, and we're right in that area. It's not perfect. Take care, David. See you Thursday. It's not perfect, but it gives you the idea. I mean, this wouldn't have stopped. This would have made would still have let, made you stay in for the lower parallel. But you can see this thing's got pretty good structure all the way along. At least I think so. Did you guys learn anything today? People are just walking out on me. Okay, good. This trade hurt your head? Sorry about that. Well, watch the, hopefully the recording will go well and uh, you can watch it and it won't hurt your head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you went so long. You guys, uh, Picasso, oh, Picasso, thank you. Um, I think thank you. That's the woman with two, lo two noses, right? I love these sessions. We learn so much. Good. I appreciate that, BJ. Um, you guys have a good uh, Monday. I will see you at midday in a couple hours. Learn more on identifying the fulcrum. Jose, we're going to practice that. How about that? I'll see if I can spot more. If you guys spot them, send, me, send them to me, even if they're failures. If you see them, send them to me. All right? Everybody take care. I'll see you in a couple hours.